Hello and a very warm welcome to Great Clacton Parish and to this our Sunday service, our Sunday online service. Welcome to YouTube. It's great to have you with us today, whether you're watching this service as it premieres on Sunday the 16th of July, should be around about 11 o'clock, uh, whether you're catching up sometime later. Still wonderful to have you here. And I'm filming at St John's Church. I'm actually filming this part of the service on the uh, Saturday evening, but before it uh, premieres. And we've had a day of weddings at St John's, very unusually. We've had two weddings here today. So I thought you'd like to see some of the lovely wedding flowers. Uh, I'm filming from near the, the back of the church, near the west door. And you can see some of the flowers that were here to greet people as they came into the weddings. And you can see down the, uh, right down the church uh, fr fr from here. And in today's service, well last week we thought about how it's God who's in charge. God is in charge of our lives and of our plans. And how foolish it is to forget that. And today we think about, well, if God's in charge, about crying out to him uh, for, for what we need. Um, and we're especially looking at the time in the Bible when Solomon called out to God for wisdom because he knew he needed it. For Solomon's a bit of a mixed up character in the Bible, but at that stage he was doing just the right thing and asking God for just the right thing. And we can learn from his uh, story today. Mark Holdaway will be helping us with that and helping us um, lead part of the service once more. And I'm very grateful to him and the folks across at Kirby and Great Holland, just a few miles away from here, for allowing us to use uh, some of their online material as well. As in previous weeks, I'm going to start with the collect for today. Uh, it's the, um, now the sixth Sunday after Trinity. And there's some great collects in the prayer book for this uh, time of year. And so we pray this for ourselves. Merciful God, you've prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a great hymn as we start. One that reminds us of all God's blessings. God's blessings uh, physical, uh, the, the, the changing seasons, uh, the, the um, weather that blesses us. And after lots of rain in Clacton, we've had some lovely sunny weather for the weddings today. And so very thankful for that. So you might be able to hear the, the wind that's still rattling the roof, so sunny but windy here today. We thank God for all his blessings, his physical blessings, but his spiritual blessings as well. And in this hymn, we finish off by thanking him for his word, his word to us. Fill your hearts with joy and gladness. A great hymn of Timothy Dudley Smith, based on Psalm 147. Let's sing together as Rachel leads us. And then it will be over to Mark to lead us through the first part of our service.
It's lovely to welcome you to be with us uh, and it's lovely to share these words of thanks and praise to God, to pray, to hear God's word together. Let's begin uh, with some wonderful words from the beginning of Jude. To those who have been called, who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ, mercy, peace and love be yours in abundance. Well, let's remember those things that God and only God can give to us. And as we come to our confession, we remember how great God is, but we remember his mercy given to us as well. Mercy be yours in abundance. Let's say the words of our confession. Let's pray the words of our confession together. Lord God, we've sinned against you. We've done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At the end of Jude, it says this. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life. God's mercy and forgiveness brings us eternal life. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, in praise to him, let's say together Psalm 25 and verses 1 to 7. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Saviour and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Yeah. 
Well, thank you to Mark for leading us through that part of the service. He'll be coming back in a little while to uh, speak to us um, about uh, King Solomon. But before that, just let me pause and uh, say that we've got a new uh, newsletter out this week. It um, reminds us of all the different things coming up. And on the front page, it has uh, a reminder that our holiday club is just a week away. And so this is a week of setting up coming up for our holiday club. I'm just going to grab a poster for holiday club um, from our, our, our notice board. And um, beside the sea is the theme this year. We'll be thinking of all the, that Jesus did around the Sea of Galilee as it tells us in Mark's Gospel, uh, his teaching, his uh, miracles, uh, his uh, calling of his disciples, um, lots that happened just on the shore or on the lake, on the sea itself. Uh, we retell all those stories and um, show through them who the Lord Jesus is. And we're hoping to have lots of uh, children, lots of young people joining in uh, and uh, having great fun in this building, but also learning uh, about what the Bible says about Jesus. Holiday Club 2023. We're looking forward uh, to that and getting ready for it. And on the front of page of our newsletter, it uh, suggests different ways that you could get uh, help with the, the setting up week for Holiday Club. So that's quite a lot of what's going on uh, this coming week in church. Um, just let me say some other things that are happening. Uh, if you're watching this as at premieres, it's not too late to come along to our afternoon night at Birch Hall Adventures, uh, just across outside Kirby. Um, that's from 12.30 today. And then lots of the, the last thing of the term coming up. It's our last little fishes on Monday, and that will be in the Vicarage Garden. Um, it's our last Tuesdays before the summer break. Um, on Tuesday, our lunch club, uh, that's at 11.45 on Tuesday at St Mark's. Uh, do get in touch with the office if you'd like to book in for that. should have mentioned our last Searchlights After School Club on Monday afternoon. It's the last Wednesday Worshippers uh, before the summer break, 11 o'clock on Wednesday at St Mark's. Um, and then it's the last Thursday evening group at St Mark's on Thursday evening as well. A couple of other things to mention. It's on, on Thursday morning, 11 o'clock at Wheelie Crematorium in the garden, we'll be scattering the ashes of Clive Upton, a, a, a wonderful member of our church family, known to many, who sadly passed away this time last year. And uh, as Clive didn't have any family that we know about to collect his ashes, we've decided a year later on to scatter his ashes at, uh, in the lovely garden at Wheelie Creme. So do join us if you want to at 11 o'clock on Thursday the 20th uh, of July for the scattering of Clive's ashes at, at Wheelie. Um, then on Friday, we're actually having our normal Sunday communion on Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock here in St John's and that's so that people who've been helping setting up for Holiday Club after a week of setting up can join together to pray for the club and share communion together. Friday the 21st, four o'clock, here in St John's. And then Saturday morning, uh, 22nd, uh, the last way to help with the holiday club setting up is we're having a vicarage mowing morning to uh, get the grass in the vicarage garden into shape for the uh, holiday club the week after. And I think you really can hear the, the roof rattling here at St John's a little bit. So that's everything that's going on in the coming week. Lots of setting up and lots of last things uh, before the summer break. Well, we're going to hand uh, back over to Mark in just a couple of minutes' time. And um, he's going to talk to us about the time when Solomon, just after he became king, uh, asked for God's wisdom. He's going to read from the book of 1 Kings and uh, then point us, 1 Kings chapter 3, and then point us to that uh, incident and what we can learn from it. Just a short thought on that today. But to lead us there, 
and to remind us how Solomon fits into the whole big picture of the Old Testament. We've got once more the Bible journey in three and a half minutes, or the Old Testament Bible journey in three and a half minutes from the Bible Society. Just a slightly tongue-in-cheek look at the story of the Old Testament, but one that does help us to put things in the right order. So I do hope you enjoy that, and then uh, over to Mark to read and to help us to think about what happened to Solomon at that time. Israel, God's people. Ever wondered how the journey unfolded? Here's a snapshot through the Old Testament. Skip past nature boy Adam and Dr Noah Doolittle. We're picking up the story with the first ever Jew, Abram. He lives in a place called Ur. It's not as bad as it sounds. One day Abe hears God, pack your bags and move to Haran. From Haran he treks to Canaan, presses onto Egypt. And after all that, he goes back to Canaan, which also wasn't as bad as it sounds. Then God's people get settled in. Meet Joseph. He's a bit of a show-off, struts around in his fancy robe and brags to his brothers that he's dad's favourite. Humble guy, then. They beat him and sell him into slavery. <laughs> Brotherly love. Joe ends up in Egypt and goes from prisoner to prime minister, rescues his fam from famine and they all hug it out. But things don't stay cosy for long with Pharaoh by name but not fair by nature. He makes some slave labour God's people want out. Enter Moses. As a chat with God through a burning bush, God gives Moses the mic. Let my people go! But Pharaoh's having none of it. Uh, no. So God sent apart the waters and his people stroll the seabed to freedom. <laughs> Awesome. Next, there's talk of a purpose-built place for God's people, but first comes a 40-year wait. The baton passes to Joshua, one of the 12 spies. They I spy promised land. God's people get settled in, split into 12 families, but they don't stay in touch or talk on Facebook until they're fed up again poked around. They want a king. Next up, Saul, a man's man. He gets the post, but doesn't deliver on Unite in the Families. Enter new king, David. Warrior by day, singer of epic love songs to God by night. Dave gains ground and expands the land. Then, son Solomon, bit of a ladies' man, but he's a wise bloke too. Honestly, he'd run rings around Yorda. He continues what his old man started. More land, but more wives and more questions too. Next, the crown was Rehoboam, who botches it up. Advisors tell him to go easy, so he raises taxes and chucks scorpions at people. As you do. If the tribe's a team, he loses the dressing room. God's people split. Ten up north. Two south. A bit later, the northern lot get an offer from the Assyrians that they can't refuse. Then the Babylonians make a similar offer down south. Jerusalem's in rubble, they kick the king out and get shot at the temple. With Jews scattered and living out of suitcases, God decides it's time he gets his home back. He appoints Haggai and Zechariah as chief architects of the temple, Mark II. They go field of dreams on us. If we build it, they will come. And they smash it out of the park. Next, Bible boy Ezra and Nehemiah, king of Kapkarian, build a well big wall round said temple, so enemies think twice before invading. <laughs> nice work, boys. Time and again, men and women step up to answer the call for obedience. And it wasn't just the Jerusalem locals. Back in Persia, young Jewish girl Esther wins the next top queen competition and puts her life on the line to save her people. Well in, Esther. Talk about the right place at the right time, eh? Though well, something tells me God had something to do with it. So there we are, journey of God's people in a really big nutshell. And the next 400 years, it's the Greeks and Romans who are trending. Romans even end up calling the shots in Jerusalem. People start asking, where's God? The answers, through the obedience of a pregnant virgin and a carpenter fiancé. Something tells me that story will forever change the course of history. One Kings chapter three, and I'm going to read verses one to 15. Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married his daughter. He brought her to the city of David until he finished building his palace and the temple of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. The people, however, were still sacrificing at the high places because a temple had not yet been built for the name of the Lord. Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the statutes of his father David, except that he offered 
sacrifices and burned incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place, and Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. And Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued his great, this great kindness to him, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, but have asked for the death, or, uh, and nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice. I will do what you have asked. I'll give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I'll give you what you've not asked for, both riches and honour, so that in your lifetime you'll have no equal among kings. And if you walk in my ways and obey my statutes and commands as David your father did, I'll give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke and he realised it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he gave a feast for all his court. These are the famous words, the chapter where Solomon asks for wisdom. But the chapter does begin in an ambiguous way. The opening verses 1 and 2 particularly are questionable as you go through the rest of the Bible. And we wonder which direction Solomon will take. But at this point at least it seems he will go God's way. Verse 3 leads us in that way. Solomon showed his love for the Lord. And then the rest of the chapter shows us that as well. God asks him a question, what would you like? And Solomon answers, he'd like discernment and wisdom. God replies and says, I'll give you that and more. And then the second half of the chapter that we haven't read, we see an example of Solomon displaying his God-given wisdom. There are lots of things we could look at. Here are just two of them to draw your attention to today. Number one, his example, the example of Solomon. Uh, we could look out for what he asked for, the fact that he asked for discernment. But here's something else. Why don't we look at who he asked for, who he was thinking of when he answered as he did. He gave up a life of riches, or at least he was happy not to have a life of riches. At least he thought he'd given up a life of riches to ask for wisdom. But what is the wisdom for? The wisdom is not for his own good, but for the good of God's people. Your servant, verse 8, is here among the people you've chosen, a great people. Verse 9, give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? Let me read you a quote. Solomon's example, of course, is that he put the good of God's people above his own good. And here's, that is a wonderful example, and here's a quote for me to read. Putting God's people first, thinking of them above ourselves, may involve something as basic as intercessory prayer for the endurance and relief of Christ's suffering flock throughout our world, where they are beaten and sold and silenced, 
in the Chinas and Sudans and Irans of this age. Or perhaps there's an elder in a church who has no kingdom like Solomon's, but who begs God for a hearing heart to rule wisely among the small part of God's Israel where he serves. Well, let's move to our second point to remember from 1 Kings chapter 3. And this one is the one who is to come. The one who is to come. Solomon is a very wise king. Isaiah tells us that there is one to come who will also be a wise king, wiser still. And then Colossians chapter, three, chapter 2 verse 3 tells us this. In order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Solomon was the wisest king. Jesus is wiser still. That as our king, he will always do what is right and best for his people. Can you imagine what it would be like living under King Solomon? Well, it's even better living under King Jesus. Well, thank you so much to Mark for that. Helping us to think um, a little bit more carefully about that well-known Bible story. And we're going to ourselves come to God in prayer, asking for our needs. First of all, we're going to do that in song as we sing, Be Thy My Vision. Uh, Pam's going to lead us in that. And then uh, in the second verse, we'll ask God to be our wisdom as well. The wisdom that we need for our lives and our journey um, too. That will lead us to our prayers that Mark Holdaway is going to lead us in today. And just in between those, we say together the creed to remind us who we are praying to, the Lord that we're praying to. And interestingly, today's prayers from Mark are based on prayers that you can find in the Book of Common Prayer, the old prayer book. So slightly oldie language, but wonderful prayers for what we need and for what our wider country and world needs as well. So first we sing a prayer for ourselves, say the creed, and then Mark will lead us in prayer.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father in heaven, keep your household, the church, firm in godliness, so that it may by your protection be free from all adversities and may devoutly serve you in good works to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And two prayers from the prayer book. Most gracious God, we humbly beseech thee as for this kingdom in general, so especially for the High Court of Parliament, thou wouldst be pleased to direct and prosper all their consultations to the advancement of thy glory that all things may be so ordered and settled by their endeavours upon the best and surest foundations that peace and happiness truth and justice religion and piety may be established among us for all generations these and all other needs for them for us and thy whole church we humbly beg in the name and mediation of Jesus Christ, our most blessed Lord and Saviour. Amen. And, O God, the Creator and Preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech Thee for all sorts and conditions of men, for Thou wouldst be pleased to make Thy ways known unto them, Thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of Your Church, it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness in all those who are in any way afflicted or distressed in mind, body or estate, that it may please you to comfort and relieve them according to their needs, giving them patience under their sufferings and a resolution of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you to Mark uh, for those wonderful prayers. And one way that we can continue to pray especially for the things that um, are maybe closest to us and closest to us as a church, is to use our uh, little prayer diaries that we produce um, every couple of weeks usually, though we're in the middle of a four-week one at the moment, a four-week uh, prayer diary. It helps us to pray for some of the summer activities that we're preparing for and um, that will be happening over the, for the, the next uh, month or month and a bit. So uh, do have our special uh, summer activity, special prayer diary, and do use it to, to pray for what's coming up, if you can. Well, a big thank you to all of you as well who've watched uh, today, have been part of our service, whether you're our Sunday morning online congregation, or whether you are um, maybe have been to one of our services in our buildings and are now uh, catching up with this a little bit later. Thank you for being part of our uh, online church. 
and if you do want to get in touch with it about anything, the church office is always there and my email address to speak to me directly is mark.gtclacton at gmail.com. Please do get in touch, pass a message on. I can pass a message on to others uh, for you if you have a greeting for other people and so on. Coming towards the end of our time together and remembering some of those themes that we've picked up in the last few weeks. How God is in charge of everything, including our lives uh, and how we call out to him for what we need uh, most of all. We're going to sing together. We rest on thee. We rest on the Lord. We rest on him, the one who can provide what we need uh, at all points of our lives. We're going to sing as Rachel leads us, and then it's over to Mark for a final prayer. Let's close our time together with these words from Romans chapter 15. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.